The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Straight show thyself approved unto God a workman that readeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The greatest and the important thing for a believer on this earth is none other but to learn and to be edified in Bible doctrine. And in this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer being termed out as Alec and Eketes is new spiritual species in Christ. As the great work to be done before he could approach the word of the Lord. Not as many people think meditation is something that they should sit like in my country, yoga. Where the so-called ideal worshippers who think the meditation for them is to discipline their body and to have a concentration into their mind. And that's not the meditation which this dichotomy nature people can think and can understand when compared to the meditation given for us into the spiritual realm in the Bible doctrine for only trichotomous natured people. The believer has been termed out as trichotomous in nature because he has an activated human spirit in him. And that activated human spirit is the only link that can have to have fellowship with the God consciousness in the Lord. There is no way, no consideration, no other point or any other gimmick that could be used as a trick that could be used for concentration or for meditation upon Bible doctrine. Disciplining your human body may be profitable for you. But that has nothing to be done to Lord's word and for Lord's glory, dear brethren. Lord demands only one thing and which is very simple in the privacy of the priesthood. No other nation has known, no other religion will know, no in the past nor in the future will ever a believer or any other unbeliever can ever imagine or could ever think. The grace bestowment of the privacy of the priesthood given only to the believer in Christ. This great bestowment of the privacy of the priesthood to confess your sins directly to God the Father and get back into fellowship with Lord God the Holy Spirit so that your concentration could be perfect. And actually each and every one each and every tape of mine should be an introductory prayer. A prayer for the privacy of your soul in the confession of your sins for rebound so that you can get back into fellowship with the Lord. And when you say Amen, you will shift the gears and you stick into extreme concentration to learn upon Bible doctrine. And in the silence of the prayer, some people may live that is left to them. Because they are not able to understand Bible doctrine. Because understanding Bible doctrine is a spiritual phenomena. It is not a joke. It is not your human haiku. It is not your geniusness. It is not your simple telling moral stories, which other religions also do. Christianity has nothing to be done with such kind of things. Christianity has a spiritual phenomena. And Christianity requires a spiritual phenomena to be executed, to be fulfilled, to be controlled. And that spiritual phenomena requires on our part concentration. And that concentration is not possible for any believer if he's not in fellowship with the Lord God of the Holy Spirit. Maybe he may quote several things. Maybe he may understand several things. But but getting back to our mind and making it a practical application in the synchronization of the doctrine demands that the believer to be prepared rightly from the word of the Lord, rightly dividing it only under the empowerment ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And if it is not to the empowerment ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, then there is no way how much you concentrate, how much you meditate, how much you think, how much you read, how much memory power you have, you will not even able to understand a simple word from Bible doctrine. Because Bible is subjected to multidimensional facets of exposing the word. It is not subjected to only one interpretation. Bible has only many things to be taught, but the same interpretation in, same, in other different categorical subjects have different meanings into it. It is a multifaceted dimensional work. And that same interpretation, looking into the point of dispensation of the Old Testament time, right now and right in the future, will have different implications. But Bible doctrine being under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit thought, will be subjected to one interpretation alone.
and that one interpretation demands the ice concept in the pulpits and the dispensing technique of dispensations to be rightly taught. And since that has been a failure in today's Christendom, they do not even value the introductory prayer wherewith Jesus Christ our Lord started his ministry with the prayer and ended his ministry with the prayer. And the result of the prayer is what today we will find many Gentile believers turning out to become and to believe in Christ as his Savior. And if that was the result of that prayer which been existed then, the result of the prayer of Apostle Paul in 1st century AD, writing to Ephesians 1, 15 to 17, is not being manifested today among many believers. The reason is that the people have failed to realize the prayer of Apostle Paul. That Apostle Paul's prayer, he wants to make each and every believer perfect and complete in the sight of the Lord, so that when their enlightenment eyes could be understood, could be taken into consideration of the point of realization, what is the true purpose of the survival in this earth. That eyes have lost focus now. That eyes have been given scale of values which are very wrong. The eyes have been scaled with masks with hypocritical nature, with penance, with guilt, with tongues, with miracles, with healings, in fact even with tithes. That scale of values have been blinded with such kind of a doctrinal theology, but not with the true isagogical, categorical and exegetical exposition of biblical truth, dear brethren. What a shame and a pathetic condition it is for us to stay in such kind of an apostasy period where rejection of Bible doctrine is to the ample and you just lay down your hands upon hand and sit and watch how the Christendom has been ruined but not renovate your thinking by starting exegesis in your pulpit. Because you know why you will not come up? You don't have love for the Lord. You have love for your own belly, you have love for your own soul, you have love for your own lust patterns to be fulfilled, but not to honor my Lord. That's why you don't live out your Pentecostal teachings. That's why you don't live out your scientific phenomenon of Roman Catholicism, the way they have been spreading, telling to the point, a Big Bang Theory is the way of evolution to this earth. In fact, even some morons have come up with the idea that aliens and UFO technology are nothing but angels and the supreme beings that have been communicating to this world. When the flood hit, Bible doctrine will never lie. Bible doctrine has told that those men living eight, no one survived in this earth, not even those Nathanims or Nephilims. Nathanims were in the service of Jehovah, but not Nephilims, it is sorry, it is Nephilims, half man, half God. When Bible doctrine affirmatively, dogmatically, with emphasis, tells to the point, with great authority and veracity in his word, then from where these angels came, from where these demigods came, is it not into the mind of their own institution to think vague things, not to lay their heart to understand Bible doctrine, not to give top priority to discern the word of the Lord, but rather think in the vain and imaginary things. I don't deny angels do exist, but angels are not aliens. That is what the point I want to tell to you all. Nor these aliens are not those demigods, nor their genies. These are man-made creation of their own innovative thinking. Reading some Qurans, reading some, uh, uh, reading some mythological books, and telling that such kind of a people will definitely exist. Bible doctrine is theonistas, God breathes. It has that accurate information no one can even strangle around. No matter you may make his head upside down. Bible doctrine alone shall reign forever and forever, dear brethren. And for your root to be grown up in the form of a fruit in the tree requires that root take downward to the maximum of greatest soil. And that maximum of greatest soil in the root is nothing but Bible doctrine, dear brethren. That's why we need to always have a concentration upon learning the word of the Lord, not to listen to such kind of a stupid things by Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamad Didat, and who doesn't even know what is preaching, who doesn't even know, in fact, such kind of a moron pastor teachers who are existing in today's Christendom for what they preach, how they preach, where they preach, and what is the reason behind their preaching. They simply come around and tell what they've done is right, what they're doing is absolutely great, which is sheer out of a lie, that's it, and sheer out of a blasphemy, that's it. They have nothing to be done with the alignment of Bible doctrine when they look into the mirror of the word of the Lord, dear brethren. That's why it's a great and earnest plea for me not to judge you, but rather to tell to you again and again in the pain of my heart, start exegesis in your pulpits, start the renovation work in your pulpits, start the isagogical categorical exposition in your pulpits, start the dispensing technique in your pulpits, and rightly give that honor which is due unto his glory by rightly dividing the word of truth, dear brethren.
Men may come with their very thoughts. Men may want to do so, those things wherewith they feel they are happy. But as far as Bible doctrine is concerned, as far as the mind, mind of the Lord is being concerned, if they are not showing forth the sign of their spiritual growth by showing faith in Christ, that is what when an unbeliever in his reality who hears the gospel, he, in his reality being spiritually dead but physically alive, when he expresses the faith alone in Christ alone as an absolute confidence in the faith of the Lord, that is what the authority and the veracity of the confidence that he has in his word, he becomes an immature believer that is what he's been saved this immature believer in his reality has been attained that salvation which becomes a reality and then what does he do after this he wants to grow up spiritually that's what the Bible tells positionally he has been superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Santan but experientially he needs to grow up and what is the ultimate sanctification ultimate sanctification will be taken care of back by God the Father in the heaven so you have only two things to be done. Salvation is an accomplished fact. There is nothing you can work for it. Tetralastai in the Greek. And a resurrection, there is nothing you could be done. At the trumpet of the at the at the blow of the trumpet, the people will rise, those who are dead in Christ first. Even that has not to be done for you anything. The only thing you need to do is your spiritual growth, is your own spiritual life. Never will Zakir Naik nor Sheikh Ahmad Didad will understand these things. Never he will even come close to realize what is meditation in Christ. What are the things that have been discerned spiritually to the mind as told in 1 Corinthians 2, 9-16. through The mind of Christ could be discerned only by the one who is spiritually alive. Your physical inward nature may tell to you many things. But that has nothing to be done because you are just like a henchman for Satan. But the opulent grace, the opulent blessing, the opulent honor, the key to unlock the scripture has been given into the hands of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the communicating ministry of this uniquely spiritual gift of a leadership one by the male believer alone, who has this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, will open the doors, will open the scriptures, will unfold the truth and give to you those opulent riches which have been reserved and kept for you in eternity past. And individually for each and every believer, the equal privilege and equal opportunity to execute this unique spiritual life of all time this unique spiritual life followed by the three stages of the adult one which include spiritual self-esteem number one followed by cognitive self-confidence into the doctrinal realm plus problem-solving device number seven and eight sharing personal love towards God and impersonal love towards mankind and then providential preventive suffering a suffering for blessing a trusting for you whether you have endured in doctrine or not when you pass it you have spiritual autonomy so in the second stage spiritual autonomy plus cognitive independence that is what you have only doctrine and you don't have anything else to be taken for counseling plus problem-solving device number nine which is sharing the happiness of Christ plus followed by the great testing of all time movement testing under four categories people testing thought testing your thought is also have to be brought into captivity for Christ your system testing and your geographical will as the God's operative will where you have to survive and when you pass down this you reach the third and final stage of spiritual maturity and this third and final stage is what Apostle Paul tells to us I have not yet attained I need to attain that and that spiritual maturity is the spiritual resurrection where with you and I have been called this spiritual maturity followed by cognitive invincibility being your doctrinal status quo doctrinally you are cognitive invincible there is nothing that can come close for you you are cognitively invincible followed by your problem solving device number 10 which is occupation with Christ and when you have been there for evidence testing either of the one category towards life or towards the plan of God you don't have there any prayers or any interstices or any elevation of your suffering but rather doctrine 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 which are put in your soul not in the Bible you take doctrine recollect the doctrine what you have learned and you apply to the situation and you work on for your progress and that's what your spiritual growth should be that you should work between the salvation and the resurrection on this earth so when you pass down either of the one test towards life like Job and towards Lord Jesus Christ towards the plan of God then you will be called as a winner believer or maximum glorified one or the invisible hero and that is what you and I have been called forth to show forth the glory of the Lord 
But what are we doing? We are not interested into that glory because we do not know how to concentrate in the Bible doctrine, nor we do not know how to be under the controlling power, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because Satan has been infiltrated the Christendom very well. It has been infiltrated, filling of the Spirit means speaking in tongues. It has infiltrated that you need to jump around, you need to have a second experience, you need to rise to the cloud and fall down from the cloud, then only you will have that emotional ecstasy. No way, no chance at all. As you were before believing in the Lord, it will be the same after believing in the Lord. If you have been filled with the Spirit, it will be the same after you have been filled with the Spirit. But what does it do? It gives you in your heart to prick and to tell to you, study doctrine, learn doctrine, hear doctrine, to relearn doctrine, apply doctrine. That's what will be the only process for you when you have been there under the controlling power of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and no other gimmicks. As the many preachers who stand in the pulpits and they try to tell to you, since I am a living one, Lord communicates to me, he has to be put into the psychological ward because he's been gone mad. At the same time, he has hallucinations in his mind, telling to the point that Lord God the Father is talking to him. There is no way Lord God the Father can communicate to you apart from his word, and his written word alone is the only communication channel for him. And if any believer comes and tells to you that Lord has spoke to me through a vision, through a dream, then just throw them out. It is only doctrine that you need to count. It is only the Bible doctrine which you need to understand. It is only doctrine that you need to give top priority. And apart from that, whatsoever it comes, whatsoever they tell, just throw it off as useless and worthless as you throw your confidence in Christ. Because many reversionistic believers are throwing out Bible doctrine, telling the ice concept is not required, telling dispensation is not required. So what they do, they substitute for ice concept and this dispensational study with the cheap gimmick tricks of miracles, healings, and tongues. And they have thrown away the confidence in Bible doctrine, what they should be. That that should not be the criteria, but rather you should take back that confidence in the word of the Lord and throw away these useless and worthless things which you tell that you spoke in tongues, which you tell that you have done miracle, which you tell that you have done your healings. And the people are interested to attack and come and to be attracted for such kind of a miraculous crusades and telling to the point for the believers as well, if a thyroid patient has been suffering for 20, 30 years, you know the miracle of the Lord helped him so that the thyroid patients, the, the patient has lost the disease. Is it not a lie? Does God do those miracles for the believers? Why does he do those miracles for those unbelievers alone so that they should believe in Messiah, the one who has been reigned Christ? But not to the believers. Believers have not been elevated from the suffering because when they are not able to learn Bible doctrine, they are suffering because of their own punitive realm. That is what God suffers them into the hands of Satan and tells them what to be done. And Satan, being an agent of Satan, this minister looks and prays not to the God but to Satan and tells under the cover of a name that he belongs to Christ and he does the healings. And you know what does the healing happens exactly? The healings or the miracles will happen to such kind of a person as such demon possesses him. Demon never possesses but rather influences him. And when demon influences him, do you know what exactly happens there? If he's a believer, demon influences, and if he's an unbeliever, demon possesses. Then you know exactly what happens. The higher authority will be occupied, and when this higher authority being occupied gets one more higher authority, higher authority than him, and when he comes and tells you, get out, then the person will feel right. And this is how the reversionism process is taken into consideration among today's Christendoms of miracles or healings. So in order to obey that higher authority, this lower authority will leave the place and he feels he has been saved, he feels he has been perfect, and he feels that this minister has done me a great work. And what does he look again, you know? He looks for such kind of a miracles or healings in the churches and in the pulpits. And such kind of a elevation of the crowd is more. But they are not looking unto the real word of the Lord, which is Bible doctrine, dear brethren. The real word which has to be communicated, the real truth which has to be inculcated, the real truth which has to be dogmatically, emphatically taught in the pulpits with reputation upon reputation has been totally reduced to the point of miracles or healings and tongues. That's why they have thrown out the confidence in Christ and in his word. They are interested to look such kind of a useless and worthless things, which is so shame and derogatory at the point when you come that you have tarnished the image of Christ and the glory of him at the judgment seat of Christ. So dear brethren, wake up to realize the truth, the understanding God's word is the root of Bible doctrine. If you are not able to understand the root, then you do not have your spiritual maturity. If you are not able to understand the root that you require to become from immature believer to mature believer under the spiritual growth, under this unique spiritual life, then there is no way, dear brethren, that you can ever come to the point of reality. Reality is nothing but blessings in time. Blessings in time is nothing but astral blessings. How can you get back into the astral blessings and the protocol plan of God? Desire for truth, love for God. 
having your strength of character, having incredible strength to carry on this character, and then your perseverance to look upon that character towards the integrity of Christ, your motivation, your momentum, your happiness, and being occupied with Christ is the greatest realm of all time which Bible doctrine alone can fulfill and Bible doctrine alone can execute. If these people are not able to understand this fulfillment of Bible doctrine, nor able to execute this protocol plan of the God, then they will never realize what is the purpose to be turning out from immature believer to mature believer. Of course, if people may think logically in the human sense, they have been turned out, the girl who will be an immature till to the point of the time of our, of our of her pu puberty period, then later on when she becomes a mature, that is not in Christianity, that is not towards the Bible doctrine. Maturity belongs to the person who grows up into the stages of spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and spiritual maturity. Do not misunderstand an immature believer in the sense of the physical realm, but immature believer in the sense of a spiritual realm, so that he could come out, he could come out from all these useless doctrines. That's what, dear brethren, each and do not be carried away by each and every wind which carries you out but rather be firm in the righteousness and the holiness of the Lord wherewith you and I have been called. And if you fail to think this is not important, then it is left to you. Either you watch this tape or not, I seldom care. But it's my duty to give not only to this generation, even into the generation they come to listen to my words. If they're listening, let them at least listen. Because Lord knew very well when he told to those 40 years of wilderness believers, this generation I have not chosen because this generation are not worth their heart is not right. Maybe that is the case. The people won't listen to the tapes or to have that witness for the truth of the Lord. Maybe they will reject it as useless and worthless. But Lord knows to whom and to which generation this words to be given so that they can form a pivot. But contemporary, you are having me as with you in this world going together it's your duty to give ice concept as number one priority and the dispensing technique as number one priority and if you fail to do that a immature believer can never become a mature believer because it is possible only through the spiritual growth and what you have now in reality blessings in time which is a scroll blessing but after your death or rapture mature believer at the judgment seat of christ what is his reality blessings in eternity and that is the hope wherewith we have been put into this world so which way you go dear brethren that is left to you if you want to take it you take it but concentration and the meditation upon bible doctrine demands that first you confess your sins directly to god the father and you pray so that you can come back and look and understand the word of the lord and from tomorrow we shall start the procedure because i know very well i have been telling in my tapes without a starting prayer but i am concluding my prayer so the starting prayer why i have been neglected is the reason people will watch only two or three minutes or five minutes in the youtube in those five minutes my prayer Prayer will consume me 10 or 20 seconds wherewith they should not be hurdled but rather they should be interested to know and to understand what I am preaching because they should know the love of the Lord not me it is not a man it is not this but it is the voice of Lord God Almighty they should hear they should change they should come and my prayer should not hinder them so I have been cut short my prayer but I cannot go against the principle of my Lord so from tomorrow's tape I will make it a sure point that first few minutes I will dedicate to the rebound technique and then get back into the fellowship because meditating and concentrating Concentrating upon Bible doctrine requires your spiritual IQ under the controlling power and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Human IQ is nothing, but your human IQ plus the spiritual, the controlling power and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit will give you to that spiritual IQ. So, what is it that we can be under the controlling power and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit? The first power option will be rebound, 1 John 1 9. The second power option will be the controlling power and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, so that when we are under the controlling power and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and we are having this rebound technique then we can learn Bible doctrine this rebound technique being filled of the spirit being controlled of the spirit will give a top priority to learn the word of the Lord and to give top priority for the word of the Lord itself and apart from that there is nothing that this word can ever realize so with these few words of exhortation I will end my tape and tomorrow we shall continue the discourses which have been required for us but from tomorrow we shall have a few minutes for the prayer of the word of the Lord and answering back Zachary Mag is not a big deal because we know we are exemplifying the fifth phrase I am thirsty and this fifth phrase of I am thirsty is a burden upon my shoulders to tell to you again and again to give number one priority for Bible doctrine in your pulpits and why the people have failed to give number one priority is what we are covering in our series of tapes and if they could listen to my tapes if they could get those things under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit then they will learn to give top priority for Bible doctrine because at the expense of immaterial they are spending the material realm at the expense of the spiritual one they are spending 
the material one. So, dear brethren, you and I need to understand you have been called for an invisible heroship. This doctrine of the church age, this doctrine of the unique spiritual life, this doctrine of the mystery realm is been buried into the pulpits. So, the Lord has given me grace to speak it out to you so that you can understand by my human mentor, that is Robert Bunker Time, who has put his entire life in digging this truth. So, this truth is for you absolutely free in the realm of this unique spiritual life. So, which way you go, which way you choose, that is left to you. It's my duty to preach the word and I will do it till I die. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Telling in the privacy of this holy not of belief and they tell to God the Father that they believe in Christ. That is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. And this eternal life is for their own, is for them only by a simple act of faith. Faith alone in Christ alone. And there is nothing. But whereas for a believer it is a great mandate to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Diamarchy Roma is the word that they should remember again and again. For a believer, the witness is the indwelling ministry of the Trinity in them. The believer, the indwelling, the Christ being for the believer, the witness is a pastor teacher who has given this bona fide gift for a male believer. And for a believer, he is having a witness one more. And that witness is Bible doctrine, which will tell to you in your soul and facet of your spirit, whether do you have each and every word of the word of the Lord, which has been given for us in the Bible, being transformed into your activated human spirit and soul or not. That is what, dear brethren, that will be a testimony. But whereas for a pastor teacher, the witnessing diam or teromai is the living epistles of each and every believer. That is what you are a work for me in Christ. As Apostle Paul said, you are not my work in the Lord. So you should be having that confidence when you tell in the judgment seat of Christ you have done your work faithfully. And if you are not able to tell that, the Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So for a, preach, for a pastor, it is to preach the word, Caruso Thon Logan, and how he can do it until and unless he diligently makes an effort to give to the study of Bible doctrine. If he's not able to give the diligence to study Bible doctrine, then Lord help him at the judgment seat of Christ. So, with these things, we shall continue tomorrow. But from tomorrow first, the rebound prayer and then our conclusion prayer as well. Not only the conclusion prayer, what we are going to listen. Because I cannot go contrary towards my Lord's work. And I cannot go against His integrity standards which He demands on us. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that Thou has given to our fellowship with you through Thy Word. Forgive us for so many days not making a prayer of which it could be honorable for us. But, Lord, we have been telling to them the truth so that they could be important in the truth. And no matter what other reasons or excuses, I know you require only your standards to be fulfilled. So, Lord, help us to rightly divide the word of the Lord by making more effective our ministry from tomorrow's state so that we can have much more to be given to this world. And at the same time, the pastors can understand the responsibility upon their shoulders and the believers also can be responsible for those things wherewith they have been given to be an answer at the judgment seat of Christ, that they have done that which was their duty to be done by learning and growing in Bible doctrine. And whereas for an unbeliever, it is as simple as that to believe in Christ, because it is the common and efficacious grace ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and believing upon Him, being united, being regenerated, at the same time, being sealed and being controlled, being indwelled under the protocol plan of God with the token of love and spiritual gift. These unbelievers also can understand what is thy matchless grace that are bestowed upon the sinful mankind so great and so lavishly. To this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us, for we ask it in the name of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ, the bright morning star. Amen.